But this is case study number one in the uh, study of the use of the application of telepathic hypnosis. Uh, in this case, Michael, and that's of course a pseudonym, he is a 23 year old male who had been sectioned for hearing voices and reported psychotic behaviour. His family are educated and well provisioned and they have no particular emphasis on religious practice. The patient normally lives with his parents. Now the full case file uh, up to date is running to 122 pages and comprises of 45,000 words. So a lot of work has been done with this case. But I'm just going to give you a, a brief summary. Um, the case file um, contains a detailed catalogue of email correspondence with the family, together with transcriptions and recorded conversations between the interventionists and with the patient using telepathy. So just to give a brief summary, Michael's case is very complex and complies several elements that contributed to his behaviour, including the influence of discarnate spirit entities, his unsupervised communication with spirits, earthbound and others of dubious origin, of at least one past life soul part, and several dissociated subpersonalities of varying ages from two years old to a 16 year old. Now, it was suggested during the unfoldment of the procedure that this young man had been harmed in a previous life by a witch who had reincarnated as his own mother. Now, of course, notions like this are immediately discarded by mainstream psychiatry. But indulge me with the experience of these people rather than applying logical rational argument. That part from the past life was intent on distancing itself from the mother and accusing her and cursing her to damnation. At a conscious level, naturally, the mother had no knowledge of this past life relationship with her son. And the patient's behaviour is reported by the family as being disruptive and challenging with screaming and shouting during the night and day. Now, telepathic communication with the patient revealed that he brought with him into this incarnation the ability to communicate with spirit entities, which he insisted on using, much to the alarm of his parents and beyond any understanding by his psychiatrists who had been treating him with antipsychotic medication. However, after clearing the negative spirit entities that had been drawn to him through his openness to the spirit dimensions, together with earthbound spirits that had been attracted to his energetic resonance, he was released from hospital where the psychiatrists were not able to explain his condition or his recovery. Following his release from hospital, and due to his innate ability to open up to the spirit dimensions and communicate with them, he soon slipped back into unhealthy relationships with them and created further disharmony with his family. At this point, attempts were made to educate him in the correct attitude with, to spirit communication under supervision. But he refused to listen to good advice from his family and from the interventionists and he continued to communicate with dubious spirits. Now the discovery of several dissociated subpersonalities led to conversations with them by means of telepathic hypnosis, with the objective of reintegrating them with the core personality. Now, clinicians who are familiar with dissociative identity disorder will understand perfectly what I'm talking about, and, and those practitioners who practice ego part therapy will have an understanding of these principles. Now, the two-year-old was successfully reintegrated with, with, with the core self. But 
attempts to reintegrate others were constantly thwarted by an angry part that was created at about the age of 16 and was intent on bullying the younger members of the subfamily. We can regard a subfamily as uh, those dissociated parts that collectively um, contribute to a, 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 a kind of family below the threshold of conscious awareness, residing in the subconscious, if you like, they're dissociated. But they can be reached through the dissociated mind. Now, at the same time, the past life memory part maintained its intent on persecuting the mother for her past life crimes as a witch. And other negative spirit entities, pretending to be his friend, continued to exploit the opportunity to create havoc with the family and with the patient's potential for living a more peaceful and productive life. Now, following the very first interaction that we had as therapists with the patient, uh, the family write this. Dear Dr. Palmer and Andy, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart you gave life back to our family. Yesterday, we discussed with the hospital personnel, Michael's psychiatrist had invited also a more senior psychiatrist to that meeting. They told us they have done MRI and plenty of psychological tests. And Michael told us that during the three days of questioning, he answered over 800 questions and psychometric tests. The psychiatrist and psychologist said that they're sorry, but they can't explain his case and can't give an accurate diagnosis. He was released from hospital, but they said that the medication should be continued for a couple of months and he should have follow up meetings with local health care experts. Which is wise because to come off psychotropic drugs, cold turkey, it can be damaging. The drugs themselves can be very harmful. So to be weaned off them slowly is, is wise. And the mother uh, concludes this communication by saying, today my son went to play golf with his father. So his situation has changed completely. Now at that time we thought the case had, was closed. But three months later, she came back to us and said, Michael has been at home these past three months. He doesn't get any treatment or therapy. The psychiatrist could not give any diagnosis after all the tests. And I hoped that I could find a, a therapist here, a psychiatrist, who would believe and understand our situation. But of, unfortunately, that was not the case. Michael is a very sensitive person. He can contact the spirit world and it seems that his skills are developing further. However, he refuses to discuss these things with me. Somehow, I've got the impression that he wants to protect his family from the spirit world. And I've reminded him about how important it is to protect himself. I've said many times that I'm afraid that he might experience the same possession that he did last spring. And he always answers, it's gone now. We're going forward, and I don't want to discuss it. Even if the situation is far removed from the challenges we faced last spring, I'm really worried if he can control the connection with the spirit world. During the last weeks, his connection with them has been more active. He started to discuss aloud, and my husband and myself can hear different types of noises. Sometimes we hear laughter and even debate from his room. When we try to ask about these noises, he says there are no noises. Apart from that, he's acting rationally and speaks about normal issues like any one of us. So he has a dual personality at work here. On the one hand, he can interact with the family normally and discuss normal things. But when he retires to his room and he's by himself, 
he enters into conversation with these spirit entities. And he's, he's refusing to listen to good advice on how to develop his, his skills and control them. Now the mother says that she went to see a, a clairvoyant locally. And she says, I wanted to understand better what's going on in relation with myself and my son. And the clairvoyant's message was quite, was very much aligned with what you say, with your findings. He said, hospital and medication are not going to help him because this is purely a spiritual problem. He said that Michael had been a medium in his past life. He has very strong gifts, but now he's not able to manage them yet. And he saw that what was happening between Michael and me now, his mother, is some kind of karmic balancing. He said this requires patience and we should seek help. Praying, energy help and help from the spirit world are important. I'm going to finish this brief summary of this case now just by saying another message from the mother. She says, I'm optimistic that Michael will be fine eventually. There are nowadays many positive moments. He's eating better. He started to paint. He's able to play very strategic computer games um, with um, a player network in Europe. But this process requires patience. And the moments when the spirit entities are coming through are really tough. So the problem with Michael is that he has a dissociated subpersonality part that was created about the age of 16. And this is a part that the family refer to as the challenging part or the challenger. And this is, if you like, your, your typical 16-year-old um, adolescent challenge to authority and in my conversations uh, with Michael using telepathy I've discussed at length this relationship with his parts and with his family uh, and it's an ongoing project and I'm just going to end this brief summary on case number one uh, now.